Hi everyone and welcome to the sew along for the asymmetric dress. So first things first this is a knit garment so you're going to need a fabric with stretch in it. Now I suggest a minimum of 50% crossbody stretch. The fabric I'm using today is a waffle knit very light polycotton blend. It has 50% crossbody horizontal stretch and a very small amount of vertical stretch. So it's probably a good idea to avoid anything with too much vertical stretch because you're going to get length growth. So I'm just going to jump straight into sewing this garment. You're going to need four threads on your overlocker or a stretch stitch on a domestic sewing machine. So a couple more things before we go too much further. When I refer to right and left hand side, that's as if I'm wearing the garment. And when we use our plain sewer, make sure you have a ball or a stretch needle in that so that your yarns, your threads don't get cut and cause a ladder as the garment's being worn. So with this garment, it's really important to know which is the front from the back of your fabric. So make sure you know that when you start. So take your front and place it right side up. Now I know this is my front because the neckline is deeper. So this is the midi neckline length. So the first thing we're going to do is the left hand side. Here, there is a long straight seam. We want to overlock on the raw edge to secure that seam. And then at right angles to it, there's another seam. And we want to overlock from there all the way down to the hemline. And remembering we're just going to be using our overlocker to tidy up the threads. We're not going to be cutting any fabric off. Now, if you wanted to save thread, you certainly could use a three thread overlock for this. Now take your back piece and find the neckline. You can see the neckline here and that's the higher neckline and it's got a notch in the middle. And we're going to overlock exactly the same seams but you're going to find this time they're on the opposite side. So it's still the left hand side but it would be the left hand side as if we were wearing the finished garment. So now we're going to work with our plain sewer. Make sure you've got a ball needle in here and also make sure you've test stitched and your tensions are balanced before you begin on spare fabric. And um, it's a good idea to lengthen your stitch length from normal. So when you're ready to go, what you need to do is place these garments right sides together. So you want to place the um, back right side up and then the front right side down. So here we have our fabric right sides together and my back is right side up and my front is right side down and I've drawn these together at the neckline. So at the moment both of the edges that we've previously overlocked should line up. Now if you look a short way down the seam through your overlocking you're going to see a notch. What I'd like you to do is match those two notches together and then match the neckline together and we want to sew a one centimeter three eighths of an inch seam starting directly opposite this first notch here and we want to continue up towards the neck edge so it's only I'll just adjust that see if we can get that light a bit better so it's only a very short seam and it's three eighths of an inch which is one centimeter so start with the back tack, continue to the neckline and finish with the back tack. So this is the area for the open shoulder or the cold shoulder that we're going to do. Now as you come down here again, 
oh I haven't gone very well with my overlocking there you're going to see another notch so I'll just mark that with a pin and the notch on the other side with a pin so this is the area that's going to be left open like that so what we're going to sew to do now is sew right from the end of that seam all the way up here to where this double where this notch is here so you could turn that over if you like might be easier if you do make sure those notches are on top of each other and start directly opposite those notches back tack and we're sewing here with a one centimeter three eighths of an inch seam as well and we want to sew all the way down to the end okay now we're going to turn that by a quarter turn and we're going to work on the side seam so this is the hand opening area here and what we're going to do is come down to the next set of notches so there's a notch here can you see that and so we're going to match that and we're going to start sewing a three eighths of an inch one centimeter seam directly opposite that notch back tack a couple of stitches and we're going to sew all the way down to the hemline on the side So now because we're here and it's easy what I'm going to do is come to the neckline and we're going to stitch around the cold shoulder opening now if you need to um, you could go and press the seam at one centimeter three-eighths of an inch but what we're going to do is just stitch so it is a one centimeter seam but you need to sew directly on the overlocking line so we're going to start directly at the end of the opening here because we need to stitch across it to give it some um, type of um, reinforcement there we go so when you're ready just start directly opposite the opening and stitch down through that overlocking line until you get to the end here now stop directly with your needle down in your work lift turn and pivot and we're going to stitch right across to exactly the same position on the other side so if you just hold that together you'll get a nice clean finish and then when you're in the right position make sure your needle is down lift turn and pivot rearrange your work stitch back and then stop here directly opposite your start point lift turn and pivot and go across to your start position and um, you can either back tack there but what I'm going to do is just lift turn and pivot and I'm going to back tack on my original back tack stitches okay so what that has done has been to secure our um, slash our cold shoulder opening open all right so now we need to work on the armhole opening on the same side so what we're going to do now is work on that armhole opening which is the other opening we left when we were sewing this now I'm going to work from the right hand side of the garment but you can certainly work from the left hand side of the garment if you want to so the first things first it's a good idea to go and um, press this and the other thing I'm going to do is make sure we've pressed this open so that seam is nice and flat and we want that seam to be one centimeter I'll pop a little pin in it like that so it's a good idea to start from 
the side seam rather than the shoulder because you'll get a, a better look. So when you've pressed the seam as one centimetre and I must admit I don't usually press until after I've finished we're going to do the same sort of thing we did before but I'm going to do it from the front of my garment. I'm going to start stitching directly opposite the start of the opening or the slash and I'm just going to back tack a few stitches through my overlocking line. So making sure I have one centimetre I'm going to, which is three eighths of an inch, I'm going to stitch up towards the shoulder. And now we're going to stitch down to the other side. I'm going to stop with my needle down directly open, directly opposite the opening. I'm going to lift, turn and pivot and I'm going to stitch across the top. Back to my back tack position in the beginning, lift, turn and pivot again. And I'm just going to finish my back tacks exactly on top of my previous back tacking. And trim some stray threads. So now we're going to go back to our overlocker and we're going to go back and put our garment right sides together with the front on top and coming back to the shoulder area here. So we're going to sew the shoulder seam on the other side of the garment. Now the seam on this side is also one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. So what I'm going to do now, instead of using my plain sewer and then my overlock and tidy, what I'm going to do now is sew a one centimetre seam and I'm actually going to cut off, so three eighths of an inch seam, and I'm going to cut off four mil, which is around about an eighth of an inch as I go, just to make sure that that seam ends up being one centimetre. So we're going to be sewing the shoulders together. So it's not much you have to trim off and certainly if you wanted to you could do a one centimetre three eighths of an inch seam with your plain sewer and then overlock tidy the edge with your overlocker um, if you wanted. Now we need to finish the edge here. If you have a cover stitch machine you can jump this step and do the seam at the end but because I'm going to use my plain sewer what I'm going to do now is just overlock tidy that short sleeve hem. I'm just overlocking on the raw edge. So that hem allowance there is 1.5 centimetres which is 9 sixteenths of an inch. Right. So the next part of the garment we're going to work on is the hem. So if you have a cover stitch machine, the hem allowance here is 1 centimetre which is 3 eighths of an inch. Um, so just go ahead and cover stitch that up. If you don't have a cover stitch machine and you're just going to use an overlocker, what you need to do is tidy the edge and plain stitch it so, up. So I'm going to use my overlocker to tidy up this raw edge. Okay so if you're following the way I'm sewing it now's the time to press that hem up by one centimetre three eighths of an inch and then we'll plain stitch it into place. So we want to turn the hem up and now this is a one centimetre um, hem 
just to minimize any um, tunneling or roping so that's three eighths of an inch if you do find you're getting a little bit more tunneling or roping than you want just reduce that seam down to a little bit smaller and of course um, if you press this hem before you begin you'll probably remove any of that anyway so I'm just going to stitch this directly through the overlocking line and as I mentioned if you have a cover stitch machine you'll just be stitching this into place So the last seam we need to sew before we do the sleeve hem is the side seam. Um, just like before, we're going to sew a one centimeter seam and then finish it with the overlock. If you wanted to, you could run up here with the overlock and just trim a little bit of fabric off. Um, entirely up to you. I'm going to sew it with my plain sewer. So when we sew this, we want to start sewing the seam from the hemline because we want this curve to sit exactly on top of itself. So I'm going to start here and just do a couple of back tacks to make sure I'm right on the end and then we're going to sew up the side seam in a one centimeter three eighths of an inch seam. There is a notch to match as you go Right, so now I'm going to tidy that up with my overlocker. So come to the tail of your overlocking here and you need to tidy that up somehow. What I'm going to do is just turn that up into the seam allowance and I'm just going to run a couple of back tack stitches to hold that securely and then we're going to come up to the sleeve and we're going to turn that at one and a half centimeters which is nine sixteenths of an inch and we're going to stitch that into position now start your stitching from the underarm and if you have any overlocking threads just tuck them up within that hem allowance there Remember to back tack at the beginning and end. Now if you wanted to mimic the look of a cover stitcher you could go and put a second line of stitching of top stitching beside the first line um, and do that on the fold side. So go and give your garment a really good press and we're now going to work on the neckband. Take your neckband and place it right sides together and overlock this short edge. So now fold this so that wrong sides are together and where we just overlocked that seam is going to be our center back neck seam directly opposite it there is a notch which is our center front seam center front mark sorry not seam and then part way between the two 
we also have notches which will show us where to sew the shoulders in. So I'll just mark those with a pin as well. So when you're ready, take your garment and place it like this. So we've got right side, uh, right side in, wrong side out, and we've got the back at the back, at the front at the front. Take your neckband and place that so that the seam on the neckband is at the notch for the center back and hold that in place. So when you have the center back pinned into place, come and find the notch and match that to the shoulder. Now the neckband is slightly smaller than the area it's going to be sewn into, so you're going to have to stretch the neckband to fit. And then come through and the next notch will be the center front notch. And we're going to match that to the center front on the notch on the garment and I'll just pin that there. And then our last notch is the other shoulder. And make sure that these seams face towards the back. Except for the seam that we pressed open, make sure that one is open. So we're going to start overlocking that into position, it's the last thing we have to do. It's a good idea to start not from the shoulder that's got the cold shoulder, to start from the shoulder on the other side, but if you are actually sewing a label into this garment, start from the centre back because often your um, label will hide the beginning and end of your overlocking. So if you need to, what you can do is just run a line of tack stitches with your plain sewing machine just to hold that into place if you want to. Um, some people like to run a line of tack stitches on the neckband itself two layers before they stretch it into the garment and that's fine too. Whatever you find works for you is absolutely fine. So once you've run a couple of stitches just to hold that first notch of the shoulder into place just come and match up the centre front and what we want to do is just try and straighten out that seam as much as we can. And we're always looking for a nice even amount from the edge of our presser foot. So we want to stretch it enough to put it into place, but not so much that we're going to distort our neckline. And then rearrange will work and continue. So that's it, our garment is finished. It's a very quick and easy sew. This is a dress that hides a lot of tummy issues and any other bulge issues you might have. So I hope you enjoy wearing it. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and also join my Facebook pattern discussion group where you can see garments that other people have made. Thanks for joining me, hope to see you again soon.